It's time to get this Fluval Evo Spec 5 ready for livestock. So in today's video, I finish up the Octopus Arm Frag Rack. I also give the tank a lot more flow and then adjust the lid a little bit. And last, I put an entirely custom base aquascape that's completely 3D printed and filled with ceramic media. So stay tuned if you'd like to see this fantasy nano reef tank come to life. Welcome back to IC Live. My name is Mark. All right, here's a quick recap for those of you who are just tuning in. I recently set up this Fluval Evo Spec 5. I ripped off all the ugly trim that it came with. Then I laser cut out an RODI reservoir base that the tank sits on. I set everything up and put in this octopus arm frag rack that I've been working on. Last, I custom made this tiny little roller mat filter for this little tank. That's where this build left off, so let's go ahead and pick up from there. All right, first order of business, I was going to create a custom lid for this tank, but the other lid was actually pretty decent. I just needed to trim it to size, so let's go ahead and do that. The lid is all trimmed up and after just a little bit of sanding and cutting the burrs off, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this on the tank and it looks like it's a pretty tight fit, but it's gonna work. As you can see, it now fits flush with the glass and it looks so much better than the previous version. All right, next up, I gotta get this tank some more water flow. So I'm gonna get the uh, Jabo SLW5 that I have laying around. I'm gonna go ahead and print out a guard for it. The guard is all finished up and it's looking great. As you can see, it's PETG, so it's got a little bit of stringiness here, but uh, that's nothing that won't come off extremely easy with a heat gun. I always just try to pick off all the strings I can before using the heat gun. All done and this thing is looking flawless hmm looks like I got a fresh cut on my finger wonder where that came from now I have everything I need to get this FW5 installed so let's go ahead and pull out the old box sometimes the fit can be a little bit tight it's important to make sure that the pump sits flush inside the guard before twisting so I didn't get it flush there I got all the tabs lined up it's now sitting flush so I give it a little twist and it's now secured plug in the controller Plug in the power supply and this pump is on. Moving on on this project, now I'm gonna go ahead and take this octopus arm, set up the magnets and secure it to the back wall. This is the octopus arm frag rack CAD model. Now I was originally going to secure this to the wall with a rear magnet section, but unfortunately the Fluval Evo Spec 5 does not have room in the back chamber for magnets. So in its place, I'm going to take a little piece of steel, embed it in some plastic and acrylic, and secure it to the back wall with some CA glue. This is the super thin piece of steel that I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to size a little bit later, but um, it, as you can see here, it works great with the magnets. So let's get this piece designed. That was fast. So here's the piece I'm gonna go ahead and print. Let's send this bad boy out. Now here is the profile of the acrylic piece that I need to cut out to go ahead and seal 
the next piece, which is the steel piece, into the plastic. And here is the hexagon profile of the steel piece. I'm gonna cut this bad boy out with an angle grinder, but first I'm hoping that I can kind of etch the steel just a little bit so I can give myself some guides before I have to cut this out. All right, the laser is all set up with the acrylic, so let's go ahead and get the first cut done. All right, not bad, time for the steel. Absolutely nothing on the steel, no etching whatsoever. I knew this would happen, but I also was hoping that this steel had some type of a finish on it, or even maybe a little oil or film that would burn off a little bit with the laser just to leave me some sort of guide. Moving on to plan B, I printed out the profile on some shipping paper and I'm going to go ahead and stick this to the steel and then I'm going to use this as a guide to cut things out. Now this is going to be fun. The steel hex is done and so is the 3D print. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put these things together and see if I can get them glued up and um, watertight. I'm gonna load this thing up, at least the back side of it with Weld On, so that I can hope to make this entire back plastic piece more watertight because 3D printing is notorious for having little micro leaks and I'm sure that this will too. So. There we go. That should spread it around and hopefully once again make that back piece watertight. Then I'm going to put a lot more on the outsides and then I'm going to seal it up with the acrylic. The acrylic piece fits really snug. I just need to make sure it snaps into place. Once I get it snapped, I'm going to put on a little bit more weld on on the outside just for good measure and then I'm going to clamp everything together. Moments later. Everything should be all dried up and sealed by now, so let's go ahead and take it apart and take a little look at it. Looks pretty good, except for this top left corner right there. Uh, oh well. Magnet works great. Excellent. Now this part was terrible. I hate working with ABS slurry, and ultimately I should have just sealed this with some sort of epoxy, because this was a nightmare, and I also hate working with magnets because they fly around everywhere. All right, I got it in. Let's get it all covered up. A few moments later. Probably should have waited about a day to let the other magnet set, but I am too impatient for that. So I'm going to put in the second magnet now. More moments later. All right, time for the last two magnets. And this is why I hate working with magnets. Now, as I go to try to put this one in, I pick my finger up slightly and snaps to the other magnet. And what does it do? It goes right through the ABS. And as I pull this magnet out, it pulls the other magnet out with it. This was the first one I put in too. So it was getting solid, but not solid enough. Should have waited a day. Like I said, I don't have the patience for it. Should have just used epoxy or something else. So I have to start over and I'm gonna go ahead and skip right to the finish because this part is so annoying. One eternity later. Here is the super ugly result. I ended up covering the entire thing in CA glue in the hopes that it would stay watertight. It probably won't. But this is what tends to happen on most of my prototypes. The first one is ugly and likely to fail as I learn a lot and I can iterate on it for the next version. Once I give this glue some time to cure, it's going to be ready to go in the tank. But in the meantime, I'm going to get started on the base aquascape. 
And for this one, I'm actually not gonna be using Fusion 360, I'm gonna be using Blender. I am very much a novice at this program, however, it has a much better system for quad mesh modeling, and this piece is gonna be a bit more organic feeling, so I think Blender is a better option. Many months later. Fast forwarding straight to the finished product, and here it is. Now, I love how this thing turned out, and ultimately Blender was by far the best option because I can do so many cool things here. I did not record the creation of it, and that's because I would have to look so many things up. Like I said, I'm a novice, and uh, it's not all that intuitive just yet, but it will be soon, and I'm gonna work with it a lot more in the future. But this is not finished just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and convert it now with to the uh, Voronoi structure, utilizing these surfaces that I was able to model in Blender. This is going to be a monstrous print and it's going to be extremely hard to do with the Voronoi mesh structure. This print is actually maxing out the volume of my largest printer which is the Solval SV04. And as I'm waiting to figure out how long this thing is going to take to print, I found out that I might be in trouble. You, you, you have to print on Pokemon. I do? Be, because if, if, if I come in here one more time and I see you not making a Pokemon, you, you're just going to have to get in trouble, okay? Okay, and what am I printing right now? You're printing a rock. I'm printing a rock? Yeah. And I'm going to be in trouble if I don't print a Pokemon because I'm printing a rock? Yeah. Okay. Right, Mom? All right, back to the print. This thing is going to take 22 hours to print that structure. And if anything goes wrong, I'm gonna be in trouble. And speaking of trouble, coming in hot. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. What am I not making? Pokemon. So, what does that mean? That means going to get in trouble. Oh no, don't tell on me. Mommy, Daddy's gonna get in trouble. Look what he's... He's making. Put him in time out. Okay. <laughs> Daddy, come with me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I guess I'm in time out. Twenty minutes later. Am I still in trouble? No. Why am I not in trouble? Because I, I see. Uh, you, you, you still have. <laughs> oh, because I'm gonna print hoo hoo. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you in a little bit. Hey, Mom! I'm gonna check one more time. Daddy's in trouble. <gasps> Daddy's not in trouble! Yay! You can go out of Okay, I was able to bargain myself out of timeout by agreeing to print this hoot hoot here, which is gonna take two hours and 13 minutes, so I guess I better get started. I got a lot of printing to do. <laughs> All right, I gotta get the Solval set up. I'm gonna go ahead and load the filament. This thing was empty because I don't print with it all that often. I use a lot of this glue stick to go ahead and secure the print to the bed and keep the PETG from binding to the bed. Everything is ready to go, so I push start on this print and I actually got the camera set up because this is a really long print. And as I'm doing so, I hear someone creep up behind me. Checking on Hoo-Hoo? Mm -hmm. Squeeze through there. Whoa! It's getting close. Probably about another hour, okay? So he's actually my 3D print helper, and he comes out to check on Hoot Hoot like every 20 minutes. And Hoot Hoot is printing really well. But uh, this thing is actually starting up, so let's get cracking. It's super important to get down a good first layer, so I watch this thing closely and it's not quite putting down the layer I want it to, so I make a few little adjustments, and I think this is actually gonna work. Only 22 hours and 37 minutes left.
22 hours and 38 minutes later, this thing turned out nearly perfect. As you can see, there's a little bit of stringing there, but nothing that can't be dealt with with a heat gun. And don't worry, Hoot Hoot also turned out spectacular. I just gotta go ahead and rip off these supports before I get into my sun. Here's a closer look at the Aquascape. It looks so good. There's really no problems anywhere besides the little stringing at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that with the heat gun here in a second. If anything, I wish I didn't go quite as thick on the mesh structure. It's three millimeters. I probably could have gotten away with two. These are the ceramic cubes and obviously these are too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and start smashing these down to size in the hopes of getting little pebble sized pieces that will go down the entire length of the aquascape yet not be too small to fall through the holes. Alright, I've got a lot of dust, but I think I got, might have been four cubes in there, maybe, maybe five, but I mean, minus the dust, probably three is my guess. Now I'm sealing in the ceramic media with these caps. I'm going to go ahead and screw these bad boys on, then this thing is ready to go in the tank. This ceramic media, there's going to be a lot of surface area for bacteria to grow on, and that is super important for reef tanks because bacteria is what filters the majority of the nutrients in the water. You can see right here in the holes, you can see some of the media through the holes. It made it to the majority of the aquascape and this is gonna be excellent for filtration. I can now do the final setup of the tank. But just before we get there, Hoot Hoot is done. He looked really great. I ripped off the supports. Hey pups, let's see how my son likes him. Who's that? Is it cool? Mm -hmm. You like it? Mm -hmm. Well, I was definitely expecting a much bigger reaction, but he's got Pokemon on and it's right before bedtime, so he's super sleepy. I am no longer in trouble, so let's get back to the build. Step one is to get this thing drained and go ahead and remove everything from the tank. However, before I got anything drained, I could not help myself. I had to try out and see how this aquascape fits in the bottom. So this was my first time setting it in the tank and 3d printed plastic usually will float ever so slightly this does not float and the reason it doesn't float is because i jammed in those ceramic cubes and although they're very porous they're still really heavy this thing fits perfectly and that is the big positive of using cad models to test out all the designs and the measurements first all right it's all ready so here is my steel embedded piece i'm using a black ca glue to go ahead and hold this thing to the wall. I believe the rear wall is probably ABS. So this should get a really solid hold once it dries. I didn't do a very good job filming this, but I'm actually just trying to find a place to stick this right in the back. And then I gotta kind of hold it on to where it tacks just a little bit. It was not staying on, so I grabbed some pink duct tape and taped it in place. The rear piece is drying, so I fill everything back up. It's all dried up, rip off the duct tape, and this is the moment of truth. Let's see how this thing looks. All right, it's sticking really well, but I instantly notice a problem. I place the octopus arm too high. So I go to push it lower, it's not as secure, and I just cannot take it. I didn't film it because I was so pissed, but I end up removing the water again using a razor blade and a scraper to get that rear piece off the back wall, ultimately damaging the wall just slightly, but I do get it installed in the correct spot. And here it is. 72 hours late. This is the final tank setup and it looks so much better. I moved the octopus arm down by an inch and I'm so much more happy with it. The aquascape looks great. Here's the front view. Unfortunately, there's not enough room for that SLW5 pump in the corner, so that is gonna come out soon. Uh, here is the roller mat, check this out. It's working really well. Notice the right side's super dirty. 
and as I roll it, you'll see more particulates come up. I don't even have any livestock in the tank, so this is just from the bacteria and the random stuff that gets into the tank from me working on it. So this was a long one, and that is a wrap on this video. This thing is ready for livestock, so that's going to be what I do next. I already know what I'm putting in the tank, but I'd love for people to guess, so leave a comment on what you think is going to be in here. I'll give you a hint. For the most part, it's going to be a quarantine tank and small grout tank for coral frags, but I am going to have one creature. It could be a fish, it could be an invert, it could be a whole host of other things, and who knows, maybe I'll change my mind. So be sure to leave a comment, and if you like what I'm doing here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you live in the next video. Hold, 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 hold.